Hey there, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom, and today we are talking about rainfall. And you are going to be able to describe the, how the amount of rainfall varies in different parts of the United States, and you are going to be able to explain how the amount of rainfall affects the types of living things found in a region. You may recall times where you have been caught out in the rain and you're dealing with a very hard rain <clears throat> and trying to figure out like what happens to all this water, where does it come from, and where does it go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at this map and we need to figure out on this map where would we be located and in which rainfall region would we land. And we're kind of right on that border between the peach and the lighter yellow, that tannish color. So we know that we're getting between somewhere in the range of 20 to 40 inches of rain each year. And that's what's going to happen where we live in our in a, in, in our region, in our home. Now, <clears throat> the amount of rain that falls during the year varies from region to region. And this map shows the areas that receive different amounts of rain. Rainfall helps to shape the land and it affects the types of plants and animals found in the region. So we can see down here in our map key, we can see that there's a blue area where we're gonna get over 70 inches of rain a year. We can see there's a green area that's going to get between 40 to 70 inches of rain each year. A peach area, which is gonna get between 20 and 40 inches of rain each year. And a yellow area, which is gonna get between zero and 20 inches of rain. And we can look at our map and we can get more details about each of these regions. So where does the most rain typically fall? Well, the most rain typically falls in the Pacific Northwest Forest. The Pacific Northwest Coast is a very rainy region. Some places within the region receive more than 250 centimeters or 100 inches of rain each year. This wet weather supports temperate rainforests with tall trees and many different kinds of plants and animals. So the most rain is falling in that Pacific Northwest forest. Where are we finding the second largest amount of rain? In the Eastern Temperate Forest. The Eastern United States receives an average of around 127 centimeters or 50 inches of rain throughout the year. The plentiful rainfall supports temperate forests with many plants and animals. So we have our two different types of forests where we're finding the largest amount of rain. What about in the central plain grasslands? The middle part of the United States receives a moderate rain about 51 centimeters or 20 inches each year. This much rainfall supports grasslands. It provides enough water for grasses but not enough for most trees. And lastly, the region that is getting the least amount of rainfall is the Southwest Desert. The desert of the Southwest receives less than 30 centimeters or 12 inches of rain a year. The living things that live here can survive with little water. And when we look at our images, we can see that there are different plants that can survive. There's different animals that are going to survive in those regions depending on the amount of rainfall they get. So which region of the United States has the least average annual precipitation? Well, most of this western half of the United States has the least amount of rainfall. Is there a pattern in the annual average precipitation in the country? Well, yeah, 
in general, the average annual precipitation increases from west to east. So if we go from our west side to our east side, we're continuing to get more rain as we move from west to east. That's an interesting pattern to notice. In which of these regions would an increase in rainfall change the land the most? So think about that one. Think to yourself about that one. In which of these regions would an increase in rainfall change the land the most? A heavy rainfall in the desert would probably change the land more because the soil there is very dry and the vegetation sparse. Now, if we go back and we look at these regions again, if you look at this image here for the Pacific Northwest and you compare that to the image of the central grassland plains, the central plains grassland, there's a huge difference in those two images about what things are growing there. So we have to ask ourselves, how are the living things shown in the photos alike and different? Well, we notice that both the Pacific Northwest and the Eastern temperate forest, they're both filled with trees. So the more rain there is, the more likely it is to have a dense forest. The less rainfall there is, the less likely it is to have a forest or a, a multitude of trees. Which could help us to ask the question, why do you think there aren't many trees in the grassland? Now, if these are the things that we know about the plants that are growing in these regions, as scientists, we need to start thinking critically about if these are the plants that live there, what are the animals that live there? As you work through this lesson, you are going to continue to analyze and label these regions of the United States. You're going to be looking at your map key and making certain that you know how to read this key in relation to this rainfall map. And as we move forward, we will be looking more in depth at each of these rainfall regions of the United States. So you should be able to say that you can describe how the amount of rainfall varies in different parts of the United States, and you can explain how the amount of rainfall affects the types of living things found in a region.